Shove It Squad, we recently held a vote on the channel to decide the next episode of Ring of the Hawk, and it seems that you all want to see a tag team compete for the first time ever on the show. And that's all cool. You'll see a second tag team competing in an additional video real soon. Now all that being said, whilst today's team won the vote by a massive majority, they also had a very loud minority opposed to the video, and I completely get it. The two guys we're looking at today represent the sort of wrestling that I pretty much hate, and that's why I'm going to have a bit of a lengthy intro today. The wrestling audience is completely split at the moment, with the majority of internet wrestling fans enjoying a more high-flying acrobatic style of wrestling, whilst there is another camp, a camp which in a way is stuck in the past. We miss the big dudes with the power moves, with the sort of promos that just wouldn't be accepted nowadays, with the hot women and the look of a god. And the problem is that nobody is catering towards this second style of wrestling, and that's led to a divide amongst the wrestling fans. If you're expecting me to hate on the guys in today's video, I'm not going to do it. The me from two years ago would have made a half hour video taking these guys down. And yes, some of you may have got a super kick out of it, but there would have also been a lot more of you who also got very angry. It's not worth it. We're all arguing over something that's a complete fantasy. It's not even real. The fact is, people change and people grow up and their interests change over time. It's just like how you used to enjoy chart music, but 10 years later it sounds terrible to you. That's how wrestling is. Just because you don't like something doesn't mean we have to make everyone else miserable who does enjoy it. And on the flip side, if you really are enjoying today's wrestling product, you need to get real and understand that a big part of the wrestling audience has been lost and alienated and doesn't like the current way that wrestling's done. And it is normal and fine for somebody to dislike current wrestling. It doesn't make them weird and it doesn't make them a hate figure. So to assure you all, I'm going into today's video with an open mind because I can distinctly remember that teenage me really enjoyed watching these guys. I'm also interested to see the drawing power of these guys for this video. I either expect it to completely tank or do really well. So one final warning. Let's just stop arguing about wrestling style for 30 minutes. Let's all just watch this video and give these guys a fair sensible grade at the end of it, based on wrestling ability, entertainment, promos and connecting with the audience. Because at the end of the day, all that really matters is that you're all together listening to the Hawk talk. And remember, B-shows and fake pay-per-views do not count on Ring of the Hawk. Here we go. Christ, I never thought I'd be doing this. And of course... If you know a wrestler that can do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K any night, any day, ha ha, shove that name in the comments, Jack! Alright, let's do it. The TNA Young Bucks. Are they lame ducks or are they make us happy as pigs in muck? Match 1. Second episode of TNA in 2010. I never realised they debuted just after Hulk Hogan did in TNA. The Young Bucks will be wrestling under the name Generation Me and it's Nick and Matt Jackson, but in TNA they're known as Jeremy and Max Buck. So I'm going to refer to them as that in this video. And they're taking on Alex Shelley and Chris Sabin, the Motor City Machine Guns. I bet I'm going to have to do a fair few reloads in this video just to keep up with it. Saban and Shelley drop Max on his back and then they boot him in the chest. Jeremy jumps into the ring so the guns kick him as well. Saban and Shelley continue working together and the crowd already seems to know who the young bucks are and they start chanting for them. During the match the band are shown walking backstage. What a contrast in teams we have here. Max throws Alex Shelley out of the ring and he kicks Chris Saban in the face and then he jumps from the top to hit a cutter. Jeremy Buck now gets the tag and he runs right and hits a drop kick on Alex Shelley. Jeremy throws Chris Sabin into the air and slams him on top of his knee and then he springs out the ring and hits a moonsault on Alex Shelley on the outside. He then comes back into the ring and hits a face buster on Chris Sabin for a two count. Sabin kicks Jeremy Buck in the head and then he charges at Max but Max super kicks him for the first one of this video. The Young Bucks start double teaming and they hit a gut buster neck breaker combination for a two count, a nice move. Sabin brings Shelley into the match and he jumps from the top rope with a flying thrust kick. He tries to go for a German suplex, but Max Buck fights it off, and Max hits a spear that Bobby Lashley would be proud of. Out of nowhere, one Buck does a moonsault and the other does a splash, and they only get a two count though. I remember watching this back at the time when I was a teenager, and I absolutely went nuts for this match. Chris Saban makes the save and dives into the ring with a springboard clothesline to take out Jeremy. Saban then boots Max in the gut, and the motor seat machine guns hit a nice double team manoeuvre for a two count. Saban tries to hit a dive to the outside, but Jeremy Buck dodges him. Back in the ring, Jeremy kicks Alex Shelley in the face and then Max Buck stacks him up on his shoulders and hits the Green Bay plunge with Jeremy hitting a 450. And then Max immediately follows that up with a moonsault. And it's over. Three. The crowd go nuts. What an upset. They did not expect to see that. This is exactly the sort of match that got Teenage Me excited. I was not an internet fan and these guys were brand new to me. 
they came in like a whirlwind with offense that I'd never seen before. We then cut backstage to the nasty boys. I just had to bring that up. Funny contrast again. Generation Me get an A for their debut. Completely unexpected and it's a win. Match 2, 6 man tag. Brian Kendrick teamed with the Motor City Machine Guns to take on Generation Me and the Amazing Red. Damn, I better not blink in this one. Kendrick jumps Red straight away and they fight for a bit. Red tags the Bucks in together and they immediately kick Shelly out the ring. They then catch Saban off the top with a gut buster net breaker combination for a two count. Saban stops Max's offense and him and Shelly try poetry in motion, but Max quickly tries a pin attempt for a two. Jeremy gets caught coming into the ring and the guns work well to drop kick him for a two. Jeremy suddenly elbows Saban in the face and he tags Red in. Shelly runs off Saban's back to drop kick the Bucks who are on the apron. Brian Kendrick suddenly delivers a vicious kick to Amazing Red and then he rolls him up for the free. This was pretty much the opposite of an early TNA days match. It was extremely rushed and the Bucks did precisely nothing. It's a D. Match 3, 8 man tag. Douglas Williams, Brian Kendrick and the Motor City Machine Guns versus the Amazing Red, Generation Me and the returning Kazarian. What an undercard TNA had back in the day though. It's insane how as stacked the roster was. Max and Jeremy come into the match together to hit a double arm drag and a drop kick combination. Shelly gets into the match and tries to roll Max up but he can't get his shoulders down. Shelly brings Saban into the match with a somersault onto Max. Max Buck manages to tag out and these guys are also rapid. This match is really just about the return of Kazarian though. Jeremy gets tired of waiting on the outside and he drop kicks Kendrick. The Bucks then attack Kendrick on the outside. Unfortunately Saban kicks Matt in the face and sends him out the ring. Kazarian wins the match for his team with a slingshot DDT on Doug. As I said this wasn't about the Bucks and they had to fight to stand out in this match. It's another D. Match 4, Four Corners Tag Match, the Motor City Machine Guns vs Generation Me vs Beer Money vs Matt Boring and Hernandez. Saban starts out with Jeremy Buck and the guns hit the double team kicks on his face for a two count. Jeremy elbows Shelly in the face and drags out his arm and tags his partner in who moonsaults across his arm. Not seen it done like that before. Jezza dives from the top again to land on Shelly's arm. Shelly fights back and he tags his partner in. Generation Me then deliver a net breaker somersault combination. Chris Saban sends one buck to the outside and then Hernandez tags himself in. Hernandez then just scoops Max up and presses him overhead like he's absolutely nothing and then he just lets him fall to earth. Jesus Christ. Boring wants to go himself so he tags himself in and he grabs Max by his throat. Jeremy jumps through the air to try and stop him but then Boring gets him by the throat as well and he delivers a double choke slam. Matt's being boring and stupid as usual, so the Bucks tag Beer Money in, and James Storm hits the super kick, and Rude rolls up boring for the free to give them the win. Again, the Bucks were not the focus of this match, and they only existed to try and harm the Motor City Machine Guns. Their booking made sense though, they shouldn't be able to beat up a giant, so they didn't. They've really dropped off since their debut, because they've not had anything to do. This is another D for them, but it has to change now because I can distinctly remember the next match and so does the copyright censor. Match 5, Destination X 2010, number one contenders tag ultimate X match. Generation Me who now have a flashier attire and they take on the Motor City Machine Guns. Huge experience edge for the guns in this kind of match. Everyone is running everywhere and the Bucks score the first knockdown. They then take Shelly out the ring with a couple of kicks. They have another kick for Saban after some acrobatics. Saban shuts down Max Buck by blasting him in the face. Guns take their time to work together and they end up with a low drop kick in Jezza's face. Shelly puts on a double submission which should have been cooler than it was. On the outside of the ring, Shelly stacks Max up on his shoulders and Saban hits a springboard crossbody to the outside. Pretty cool. The guns double team Jeremy in the ring but he hits a nice arm drag. He goes for another one on Shelly and he springs up onto the ropes at the same time and the crowd are in awe. He doesn't get very far though and the guns hit double kicks on Jezza. The Motor City Machine Guns have really slowed down the pace for this one but the Bucks start increasing the pace as Jeremy delivers a corkscrew splash onto the outside. Max is alone in the ring and he tries to make his way across the ropes. Shelly takes him down but Max spears him and the Bucks hit the moonsault splash combination. Max comes back into the ring with a face plant on Saban and immediately moonsaults the outside onto Shelly. The crowd loved this match. Jeremy gets on the ropes with Max guarding him but Saban wakes up and he runs off Max's back to take Jeremy down from the rope. Max ends up climbing the rope but the guns stack each other up and tickle Max to bring him down. That's one way of doing it. Everyone starts hitting moves and everyone is down completely shattered. Not long after they've all woken up and they're all on top of the ropes and they start fighting in the middle. All men fall off and Generation Me have a super kick party. Max powerbombs Shelly into the corner as they hit another combination of dives. 
Jeremy keeps going and flies out the ring as Taz is in amazement. Eventually, the guns throw Jeremy overhead into his brother who's hanging upside down in the corner. Saban stacks Max up in the corner and they do a sliced bread powerbomb combination to wipe him out. Saban and Jeremy then end up on the ropes again, but Saban knocks him off and takes down the X and it's over. I love this match as a kid. I loved this match when I watched it two years ago for my Monday Night War TNA series, and I love it now. It's an A. Go and find and watch this one. Even though it was a bit of a spot fest, it's okay to see one of these occasionally. And the crowd are completely into it, which always helps make the match more enjoyable. Match 6, Handicap Gauntlet Match. Douglas Williams vs Generation Me. Jeremy will start out first. He tries to out-wrestle Doug, but he gets out-wrestled. He opts for the high-flying instead and nails a moonsault, but he can't even get a 2. Jeremy face plants Williams for another two. He then nails a nice kick and tries to follow it up from the top but it doesn't go well for him. And then Douglas hits his rolling Chaos Fury suplex finisher for the three in about two minutes. Max immediately springs into the ring to take out Doug. Doug tries to go for a clothesline but Max matrixes backwards to dodge it. Max hits a head scissors and a drop kick for a two count. He knocks Doug down with a chop and throws him into the corner. He then hits a scoop slam and a leg drop that the Hawk would be proud of. Max tries to go to the top, but Doug boots the ropes down to knock him down. Doug puts him in a guillotine with leg scissors, and then Max taps out in about two minutes. Jeff Hardy's stoner friend makes the save, and he's a bit upset because he's going to have a brick to the face in his near future. The match is an S. They get the job treatment, and the crowd stop caring. I'm surprised this is how TNA wanted to follow up their amazing pay-per-view match. Match 7, handicap match. The Bucks aren't even getting an entrance anymore. They've just been shoved in the ring, and they're taking on Matt Boring. The Bucks try to jump in, but he hits a double clothesline. He then picks up Jeremy and hits the elevator. He then smashes Max with a carbon footprint. Morgan grabs a microphone and then calls out Hawk Hogan. He says there's going to be bloodshed tonight, and he lugs Jeremy out of the ring. He puts Jeremy against the ring pole, and he wants to kick his head into the pole, but Samoa Joe makes the save, slowly walking out, so I guess he wasn't that bothered. This match is just abandoned, so I can't really rate this one. The Bucks then disappeared from the main TNA show for the next couple of months, so it wasn't exactly going well for them. Match 8, Generation Me versus who else but the Motor City Machine Guns. They were already on their third match together. Let's see if it lives up to the others. Jezza starts out with Saban who scores a knockdown, and then he does a muscle taunt. Jeremy tries to roll him up, but he can't get the free. The Bucks hit the double arm drag into the drop kick, but the pin is broken up. Shelly makes the blind tag and the guns do their double team kicks on Max Buck. Max wants to tag out but Shelly boots him in the ribs. <laughs> Shelly randomly puts on a single leg Boston Crab but then he lets go. Saban comes back in as the guns play Leapfrog. Saban gets a two count on Max Buck. Shelly drops his knee and gets another two count. Jeremy is desperate for the tag but the guns have isolated his brother. Saban comes back into the ring for a springboard axe handle on Max. Max finally rolls through like he's going to pin him, but he tags his brother in, which was a cool spot. Jeremy face plants Saban, but it was almost like a pile driver, and he gets the closest two I think I've ever seen. Max does a diving kick out of the ring. He then assists his brother to do a moonsault out of the ring onto the guns. Back in the ring, Max hits a spear on Saban, and they hit their double dive for a two count. Shelley's on the ring apron, but the Bucks kick his head off. They grab Saban for the Green Bay plunge and then they try to follow it up with the 450 but Saban gets his knees up. Saban then holds Jeremy on his knees as the other wrestlers crash down on top of him. Alex Shelley hits sliced bread on Max Buck. The guns then grab Jeremy and they hit the skull and bones for the free. Guns win again. They all shake hands after the match. I think we can safely say that they've won this feud now. Can we please give the Bucks something else to do? The match was still good, but they're squeezing so much into six minutes, it's impossible to remember any individual move. It's a battle to see how many crazy things they can do in six minutes. It's a C, can we please move on now? Match 9, No Surrender 2010, the opener. World Tag Team Championship. Generation Me Challenge for the Motor City Machine Guns Tag Team titles. You have to be kidding me. We've seen this match three times already. Okay, I'm not going to get angry. Think about Happy Hawks. But come on, let's be real. Why are they even getting another shot? Well, there is a good reason for this. Apparently the Bucks are a last minute replacement because the guns were meant to be facing London brawling, but they had travel problems. Saban now has a haircut like an old man. Come on, Chris, it's not lockdown. There's no excuse for that. Shelley starts out with Jezza and they do some nice mat wrestling. Max gets tagged in and him and Saban try to drop kick each other and it gets a bit heated. Jeremy gets the better of Shelley and he brings his partner in who does a moonsault on Shelley's arm. Jezza then comes in with a stomp to Shelley's arm. 
Although the bucks aren't hills in this map, the crowd are noticeably behind the Motor City machine guns, so I guess they're hills by default. Jelly puts an unusual submission on, I have no idea what it's called. The crowd are going nuts for it, and then Max breaks it up and the crowd boo him. The crowd wanted to see it continue whatever it was meant to be. Jeremy manages to make a tag, and Max does a Matrix move to dodge Saban. He then gets a two count on a Bulldog, and he jumps from the top with a cutter for another two count. Shelly jumps from the top next with a thrust kick and he gets a two count on Max. Taz talks on commentary about how Generation Me have been complaining backstage that they want a shot. He sounds like he really dislikes these guys. He says that he needs to learn how to be badasses and stop talking about Christianity. Jezza hits a net break on the apron on Shelly. He then gets rolled in the ring and Max gets a two count. Shelly is really struggling with his neck here and the Bucks hit a double drop kick to make it worse for him. Shelly tries to come back but Max kicks him. This match is pretty different to the others. Shelly keeps trying to fight back but he gets hit from the outside. Alex Shelly finally does make the tag after the Bucks mess up. Saban's a house on fire and he hits a springboard DDT for a two count. The crowd are firmly behind the guns here. Jeremy gets sent to the outside and the guns are finally back in this match. Jezza hits a sliced bread variation on Saban but he kicks out. The Bucks kick Shelly down and they deliver the Green Bay plunge, but the Bucks can't hit the dive from the top. Everyone has a super kick party, which the guns come off best in. The guns then hit the skull and bones on Jeremy Buck and it's over. Generation Me attack the guns after the match. Yes, they're finally doing something different. They're bad losers, but at least it should lead somewhere different for them. I was going to dump on this match, but the DDT on Shelly off the ring apron makes sense and it gives them some edge. This opener gets a B. But please can we stop these two teams from constantly fighting, I want to see something different. Match 10, Men with Mohawks, Jesse Neal and Jeff Hardy's stoner friend versus the newly healed Generation Me. They have one of the tag belts with them because they've continued feuding with the guns and they've stolen their belt. Remember, we're just here for the matches when they're together. There are some singles matches but they won't be included in this video. Jeremy starts out with the stoner friend and he boots him down in the corner. The friend fights back with a couple of arm drags and an atomic drop. He then delivers a leg drop and he gets a two count. Max comes into the ring, but the friend throws him straight across the ring. Jesse Neal comes in and he works with his friend to get a two count. He nails Max with a drop kick and he gets another two count. Max tries a moonsault, but he misses it and says that his leg hurts and he rolls to the outside. Jesse's distracted by this, so Jeremy takes him out. Max then comes straight back into the ring and starts stamping and smiling at the camera like a nutcase. He was faking the injury, who would have known? Jeremy gets the tag and he chokes Jesse of his boot. The man with the mohawk fights back but the Bucks take him out of a drop kick for a two count. Max locks on the submission but the mohawk man fights it off. The Bucks accidentally crash into each other and then the friend comes into the match with kicks everywhere and the spinning heel kick gets a two count. The friend hits a double hurricanrana and then he nails a springboard moonsault for another two. Jesse Neal misses a spear in the corner and whilst that's going on, Max hits a kick to the nutsack on the other friend and he rolls him up for the free. It's a no from me I'm afraid boys. It's made even worse because the guns run out to fight them. So this never ending feud is still going. The match was a D. The men with the mohawks can shove it. Match 11, TNA Bound for Glory World Tag Title Match. Generation Me versus the champions. Who else? The guns. Just to be clear, I'm completely fed up of seeing this match at this point. So whatever my final grade here, it's probably a rank higher because I'm in such a bad mood. Also, I'm sorry for the quality of the video here. I had trouble with this match. Someone help the Herbie Hawk continue to talk. Saban delivers a punt off the ring apron and then the guns do their double team kicks. Jelly gets a two count and a crossbody from the top. The Bucks cheat to get the advantage and they hit the double DDT for the top rope onto Shelly as the Bucks smile with happiness. Saban makes a comical pinfall save. Don't know why he did it that way, but I can't hate on Chris Saban. The Bucks hit their gut buster net breaker combination, but Jeremy doesn't bother trying to make the pin. The guns work together and it ends with Saban diving to the outside and the crowd are going nuts. This is the difference between the two teams. The guns almost win the match again with a double team move. Max keeps pulling goofy facial expressions. Then he hits a cutter from the top whilst Jeremy hits a dive to the outside. Jeremy gets back in the ring and hits a 450 on Saban, but Shelly makes the save. There's a lovely spot where Jeremy Buck dives from the top but gets held on Saban's knees like before, but this time Max is still on the top rope and Saban runs off Jeremy's back to deliver a massive suplex overhead. Guns hit the skull and bones on Jeremy and it's over. Love this one, it's a B, go find it. 
Match 12, triple threat tag match for the tag titles. Already in the ring, the Bucks, cutting a promo about video games and tattoos not being cool. This promo was an S, by the way. They're taking on the men with mohawks. Jeff's friend gets the mic and says that the Hardys from 1998 called and asks for their gear back. And the champions are also in this match, the Motor City Machine Guns. Jeremy starts out with Jesse who scores a knockdown and hits a running net breaker for a two count. He hits a bad clothesline and then Jen and me work together to take Jesse out. Max Bucks stamps on Jesse's arms and Max gets a two count whilst Taz makes fun of today for having an Atari still. The Bucks continue beating on the larger Jesse Neal. There's a really cool move next as they go for another dropkick but Jesse Neal catches Jeremy with a spine buster. Jeff Hardy's stoner friend comes in and he takes out Max Buck. The friend hits a double hurricanrana on the Bucks and then he throws his own partner out the ring on top of the Bucks who are on the outside. Everyone starts diving to the outside but Jeff's friend dives the other way and he takes out Max with a moonsault for a two count. Everyone squashes Max in the corner and then Jeremy joins the party. The men with mohawks hit the morgasm but the pin gets broken up. The guns then hit the skull and bones on Jesse and it's over. It was decent, but I'm sick of seeing these two teams. It's a C. Match 13, mixed tag. Generation Me and Tara, who has a bike and some tights saying wanna ride and a top saying cougar. And they take on Men with Mohawks and Mickey, who doesn't have a Mohawk, James. Jesse Neal hits a big time crossbody for a two count. They then suplex Jeremy and Shannon dives on top of him. The girls start fighting and Shannon has the match won, but the referee misses it. The men with Mohawks take Jeremy out, but they let him go and tag his brother in. Jesse hits a net breaker and gets a two count. Tara distracts Jesse and then the Bucks boot him off the ring apron. Max Buck keeps pulling this ridiculous face at the camera. I'm not sure what it's supposed to mean, but he's been doing it this whole video. Someone needs to tell him to stop. Something weird happens in the corner next as the Bucks seem to be getting closer to Tara. The Bucks start cheating on the outside and then Tara super kicks Jesse. The young Bucks start attacking Jesse's arm, but it's pointless because Shannon gets the tag. Mickey James randomly hits a hurricanrana on Max Buck. The flying around continues as Shannon hits a moonsault on Max. Max Buck is trying to hit Mickey, but she makes him look stupid. And the men with the mohawks hit the morgasm, and it's over. The Bucks lose again. The losers all do a post-match beatdown. This beatdown rather loses effect when you lose every match. It's a D. Match 14, the Motor City Machine Guns. Ah. Jay Lethal and Velvet Sky versus Generation Me, Robbie E and Cook E, who don't even get an entrance by the way. Max gets pinballed by the entire team and looks like a clown. Velvet squashes his nutsack. Generation Me managed to take control of the match by cheating. The Bucks isolate Shelly and then they hit that nice gut buster net breaker combination. Shelly can't be stopped much longer and he brings in Jay Lethal who takes on Generation Me with a double handspring elbow. Lethal hits the lethal combination on Jeremy, but he somehow kicks out too. Saban hits a springboard clothesline, but this time the pin gets broken up. Velvet hits a head scissors on Max. Really, Jen Me looked like a complete joke in this match. The guns hit the skull and bones, and then they have the match won, but Max, <laughs> out of nowhere, uses some hairspray in Saban's face, and then Jeremy rolls him up for the free. It's a D, but it's a win, so at least that's something. Before the next match, the Guns and Generation Me squared off in an empty arena match. We can't include this one on Ring of the Hawk for rating for two reasons. Number one, it took place in a TNA B show, Reaction. And also, number two, this is not an official match. It's really good though, and it's still available online in full, so find it and watch it because it's great. This was something that WWE ended up copying because it was so successful. The Guns end up getting the best of Generation Me because they have in all of the two on two tag team matches, apart from the very first one. So it's not exactly surprising, is it? Match 15, four way tag. No one gets their entrance shown. Jen Me, Beer Money, The Guns, and The Men with Mohawks. Jeremy misses a moonsault to the outside, and The Guns drop him on the ring apron. A ladder gets brought into the match, and The Guns beat up Max on the ladder. Jeremy hits Shelly with a steel chair. Generation Me are distracted by Shelly, so Saban dives from the top of the ladder onto Jen Me. The Guns and Jen Me don't really seem to be interested in the match itself, so Jeff Hardy's stoner friend rolls up Robert Roode for the win. It's an S, I oh barely man. saw them. It's great that they're building up a feud, but it's a feud that I don't want to see. Match 16, Final Resolution 2010, Full Metal Mayhem for the TNA Tag Titles. Generation Me versus the champions. Who else but the MCMG? I'm going to spend a bit less time on this one because I am exhausted of seeing these four guys together. I'll just cover the coolest spots. 
For those of you who don't know, a Full Metal Mayhem match is TNA's version of TLC. Jeremy throws a chair into Saban's face and he follows it up drop kicking Shelly's head into a steel chair. Generation Me continue doing well as Max hits the guns with a chair. They do get in the ring eventually and Jeremy crushes Shelly with a ladder. Max tries to win the match but Shelly catches him and hits a dragon screw on Max's leg when it's sandwiched in the ladder. The guns then take turns slamming Jeremy on the ladder whilst Max is in the middle of it. The guns continue sandwiching the bucks amongst the metal. The guns then bring in two extra ladders. Honestly, this match feels overly choreographed to the point where it doesn't flow nicely. They set up a table on top of the three ladders. It feels like everyone is just waiting around for their spots. It just makes the match worse. Jeremy tries to kick a chair across the table, but he misses the table and the crowd let him know that he did. Alex Shelley hits the sliced bread onto Jeremy on the table on the outside. Max and Saban end up on the table on top of the ladders, both armed with chairs, and then Max randomly throws it down and crashes down through the table on the floor. Saban gets the belts down for the win. Not as good as you would have expected. Yes, there are cool moves, but none of them flowed well, and there's too many awkward pauses. It's a C. I can't watch these guys again. Well, that is legitimately the last match between these four guys, so I'm happy about that. So let's see what Generation Me spend the rest of their time in TNA doing. I'm sure it'll be far better than this. Well, before the next match, Tara lip syncs her theme song whilst the Bucks do some embarrassing dancing. Luckily, it gets interrupted by Mickey James and Eric Young. What a wacky, strange segment this is. The Bucks and Tara had a little friendship backstage where Tara was like their cougar, but it didn't really lead to anything. Match 17, Generation Me versus Eric Young with a Hooters girl and two blondes. So I was wrong about them moving on to better things then, wasn't I? Eric Young throws both the Bucks out of the ring. Eric Young is crazy and thinks it's a battle royal, so he eliminates his own partner. Generation Me don't think it's very funny. Orlando hits a spine buster and he rubs his body on Max. Jeremy gets a two count on some leg drops and they get another two count on a kick. Jen and me are trying to flirt with the blondes on the outside but they're repulsed and then Eric takes them out. Orlando Jordan hits another spine buster on Max and then Orlando slaps on a submission and Max taps out. It's Stop over, it's an man. S. Match 18, three months later, Generation Me versus the men with mohawks. Jeff Hardy Stoner friend lands a springboard moonsault on Jeremy. Jeremy hits a face crusher and then Max tags himself in and they start suddenly teasing dissension between the Bucks as they keep tagging themselves in. Max seems to be the main culprit here. Jeff's friend almost rolls up Max but he doesn't manage it. Jesse Neal comes into the match and he hits a back body drop. He gets a two count of his own on a cross body on Max. He gets a bit hasty though and Max boots him in the corner. He gets hung up in the corner and the Bucks want to kick him but Jesse Neal hits a mid-air spear. The Mohawks then hit the Morgasm and it's over. The Bucks seem to be doing a breakup angle. I can't blame them, they've won about three matches. I actually quite like this match for some reason though. It's a nice TV match, it's a B. Match 19, six man tag match. Generation Me, Robbie E, Cook E versus Brian Kendrick, Chris Saban and Suicide. Apparently it's Okada under the mask in this match right now. Robbie E carries most of the match, so you know that sucks. The story here is that Max Buck wants to be in charge of his team and control his brother. Max keeps tagging in and ruining his team's chances. Kendrick gets the tag and he has kicks for everyone. Jeremy has to make the save for his brother after a Kendrick kick. Jeremy finally does something and he kicks Kendrick. He looks to finish Brian off from the top but Max charges over and attacks him. He delivers a DDT from the top on his own brother and then Kendrick makes the cover for the free. Such a pointless turn, they're both losers in TNA. Max takes his Generation Me armband off so I guess the team are done oh, now. Man. It's an S. After this match, Max had a brief singles run but he failed to capture the X Division title but we aren't here to talk about that. Next up, Bischoff is seen backstage saying he's going to knock out some vanilla midgets tonight. I'm not making this up. There's definitely tension between us two. You dropped you drop me on my head. I did, I did. Okay, okay. Because uh -huh. the X Division is our number one priority. We've got the best wrestlers in the world. We're not even giving a chance. Okay, so we'll go back if we have to and figure this thing out. Blood is thicker than water. What's going on, brother? No, everything's under control. Guess what, tonight? I'm gonna knock me out some vanilla Match 20, Generation Me, who have apparently put their sibling rivalry to the side, are taking on Eric Bischoff and cold-blooded Matt Hardy. Jeremy takes Matt down with a drop kick and then Generation Me stamp on his arm from the top rope. Matt Hardy fights back with a side effect for a two count on Jezza. 
Matt delivers a second side effect and then Matt's being so cocky that Max gets in and starts kicking him back. Jeremy spears Matt and pounds on his swollen face. Bischoff isn't keen to get into this match so it's basically a handicap match. Max Buck starts taunting Matt Hardy and does the dance that Matt Hardy does so Matt gets the advantage briefly. Bischoff still won't come in. Jeremy hits a splash onto Matt's back but he follows it up with a 450 but Matt Hardy gets his legs up. The Hardy boy locks on his ice pick submission hold which looks brutal to be fair. Bischoff is now happy to come into the ring and he delivers some of the weakest looking kicks to Max you've ever seen whilst Matt Hardy holds him. Eric Bischoff, the leader of the Grey Crew, wins Stop the match and he won't let go of the pin for some reason. It's an S. Following this, the Bucks prove they've given up on TNA as they vandalise the Hawks' car and they're seen hanging out smoking pot with Brian Kendrick in the car park. Match 21, Destination X 2011, final match. The crowd are in complete silence at this point. It's Generation Me versus the makeshift team of Eric Young and Shark Boy. This is just a silly comedy match really. Eric Young was insufferable at this time in TNA. Shark Boy eventually beats Jeremy down in the corner. Sharky then moves on to doing 10 punches in the corner but Jeremy throws him off. The Shark hits him with some stone cold like offence and then Jeremy looks like he's crying. Max manages to get into the match but Shark Boy bites him. The Bucks try to kick the Shark on the outside but it doesn't look good. Jeremy eventually puts a sleeper hold on and he almost knocks Sharky out. Almost being the key word. Jeremy then hits a face plant followed by a moonsault to the outside which we haven't seen for a while at this point. Then it's all over as Shark Boy hits the stunner on Max followed by an Eric Young neck breaker. And that's it, this match was fine, it was a D, not that much to say. Okay, so now we've watched their whole run, let's take a look back at the positives and negatives and come up with a final grade for these two. And remember, we're being sensible and mature about this. We've just watched all their matches so here's the evidence right here, I'm not lying about the things I say. So we'll start with the negatives first. They had no individual personality or moves. If it wasn't for their hair colour, I wouldn't be able to tell them apart. They were heels for most of their run, but I don't think that was the smartest choice by TNA. They were better as baby faces. They had no proper storylines, and the brother versus brother storyline was randomly dropped, and so was the storyline with Tara. That's not their fault though, but they seem to be unpopular backstage. There's a reason for that. They also had a shocking win-loss record because 4 wins out of 21 isn't going to help anybody get over. Positives. When they were faces, they were more enjoyable and the crowd liked them a lot. They would have been in their early 20s at this point, and the Hawk can see potential so I'd be stupid not to sign them up to a developmental contract. They had some great matches with the guns. Unfortunately, they overdid it. So, was this as good as I remember it being as a teenager? Probably not. I wish I'd turned it off after the empty arena match. You honestly wouldn't be missing out if you did that. It also wasn't as much of a spot fest as I remember, probably because they were trying to work a heel style for most of it. Now it's time for the final grade for Generation Me. Wrestling ability in TNA is a B, but character work is an S. And I know it wasn't their fault, but you've got to try and make the best of what you're given. They were given quite a long heel run and they had a lot of time on telly, but they didn't get over with the crowd. I'm going to give them a final grade of a C, because let's be honest, it wasn't a D, but it wasn't higher than a C. Tell me what they really did other than fight the Motor City machine guns over and over again. But the bigger question is, did Tara help these boys become men? 